The Cavalcade of America, presented by DuPont. Better things for better things through chemistry. That phrase expresses the objective of every member of the DuPont organization. And DuPont now invites you to another evening of the summer musical series in the Cavalcade of America. Arthur Dyer, America's foremost bandmaster, is with us again with his concert band. He is here to present interesting examples in the history of musical development in America from the gay 90s on. <laughs> On April 7, 1889, as a desire to encourage literary expression in the public schools of Washington, the Washington Post offered prizes for essays written by the students of the Capitol. John Philip Sousa, then the leader of the United States Marine Band, was asked to write a march in commemoration of the occasion and to play it for the first time on the day the prizes were awarded. Mr. Sousa was greatly pleased with the idea, and the result was the famous Washington Post march which Arthur Pryor and his band will play as an open selection. affectionately termed the Gay 90s, the two-step was America's most popular dance, and Sousa's marches, especially the Washington Post, were in great demand. In Europe, the Washington Post march became such a symbol of that particular dance that the dance step itself was known as a Washington Post. At the World's Fair in Chicago in 1893, Theodore Thomas, famous orchestral conductor, was named as director of music, and during the spring and summer, Sousa's band was engaged to play at that famous exposition. This evening, we want to reenact an incident that took place that summer while Sousa's band was playing one of its concerts. Thousands of people attended each appearance of Sousa, but we will listen to one couple, a man and his wife, who are in Chicago doing the fair. They are seated in the rear of the amphitheater. Joe? Yes? It's great, isn't it? Well, of course it is. It's Sousa's. I mean, it's, it's great after a day at the exhibit and seeing the midway from one end to the other just to relax and listen to good music. Sure. Hey, Emma, where do you think you are? Hush, hush. What's the matter? Why, you were singing with the band. I can't help it, Joe. It makes me want to sing. You'll annoy everyone around us. Is it any worse than you keeping your foot going? Well, I can't help keeping time to a band, but you don't have to sing. I'm sorry. Quiet, please. Everybody's looking at us. Oh, dear. See that man back there walking our way? I hope he isn't calling an usher to put us out. A 
The man who heard the conversation of this unidentified couple was Mr. Tomlins, the assistant musical director of the exhibition. And during the intermission, he speaks to John Felusa. You know, Mr. Sosa, when you were playing one of those numbers, there were a lot of people who had all they could do not to sing along with you. Tomlins, that's an idea. Everyone likes to sing. Uh, do you mind if I try something? Why, no, Mr. Sosa. Second part, Mr. Sosa. Coming. We'll see how this works, Tomlins. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, our next number is a medley of popular songs. We're going to ask you all to sing along with us. I'm sure you know all the words, and if you don't, just sing anyway. We'll start with Two Little Girls in Blue. experiment proved so successful that during the engagement of Seuss's band at the World's Fair, it was repeated many times. And today, just as in the gay 90s, the rhythm of a band is contagious, whether it's a great concert organization or the little street band on the corner. One of the most popular of all band tunes is the National Emblem March by E.E. E. Bagley, which Arthur Pryor and his band will now play.
Cavalcade of America, presented by DuPont, moves on. After the Chicago World's Fair, with its successful midway, amusement parks sprang up throughout the country. To many of us, this would be a true impression of an amusement park. No amusement park is complete without its bandstand, where people can sit in the open and listen to their musical favorites. Many of our parks eliminate the concessions and similar features and specialize in musical entertainment only. Music for the Millions is heard at Willow Grove outside Philadelphia, Asbury Park, New Jersey, Ravinia Park, Chicago, the Zoo at Cincinnati, Delmar Gardens at St. Louis, Long Beach, California, to mention some of the better-known parks. The band has done much to make us familiar with the works of the great masters and also the delightful operettas, such as The Vagabond King by Rudolf Trimmel. Arthur Pryor and his band will play selections from that stirring and tuneful musical comedy. <laughs>
Many people still believe that a band plays mostly marches. But in the repertoire of every band are a number of musical compositions that are written especially for band instrumentation. They are called descriptives, and without one of them, no band concert is really complete. Such a selection is The Hunting Scene by Bucalotti, which is brought to us by Arthur Pryor and his band. <laughs> designated were made entirely of brass instruments with a fife and drum corps on the side and were incapable of the delicate shadings of a modern concert band. A beautiful example of the colorful possibilities of instrumentation for a concert band is found in Friedemann's Slavonic Rhapsody as interpreted by Arthur Pryor and his band.
turn the calendar back 25 years to begin a story of chemistry. The scene is on a very dusty country road. It's Sunday afternoon. Father and mother up for a spin in their big touring car, complete with gas headlamps and everything. Well, it's getting on toward dark, Father. We'd better be getting back home. All right. As soon as I find a lane to turn around in. Well, there's one right to left there. Yeah, sure enough. Oh, oh, oh darn. Oh. Well, what now? The tire blew up. Oh, tire. Tires. They're always causing trouble. No, wait a minute. Hold on. Not these four new ones. Now look at the mileage we've had without a single bit of trouble. What? Almost 2,500 miles. 2,500 miles? Why, that's wonderful, isn't it? It's very good mileage. We mustn't complain about it. And there really wasn't cause for complaint over mileage like that in the old days. But today it's a different story. A recent issue of the Saturday Evening Post gave some interesting then and now figures about tires. For instance, in 1910, a tire that would run 2,500 miles cost about $25. Today, a tire from which we expect 15,000 miles and often get 30,000 can be purchased for about $12. Think of it. Up ten times the mileage at less than half the cost and with greater safety every mile. What brought about this startling improvement? Well, the greatly improved methods employed by tire manufacturers, of course. And products of chemical research. Let's look at the way an old tire and a new one are made. The old tire had to be cured or vulcanized three or four hours. Thanks to chemical products called accelerators, the new tire is vulcanized in a tenth of the time. This improves the quality of the rubber and at the same time helps reduce the cost of the finished product. The old tire, as many of you remember, cracked and began to deteriorate after a period of exposure to the elements, especially hot sun. Well, the new tire doesn't suffer that way because research has contributed chemical products called antioxidants, which resist the action of oxygen. That means they help the new tire stand up much better under heat and the constant flexing that modern low-pressure tires have to take every time the wheel goes round. So today's tires not only carry you much, much farther, but practically eliminate the old-time bugaboo of tire trouble and give you greater safety and comfort at a cost few dreamed possible 25 years ago. DuPont chemists working with the rubber industry have perfected a number of the chemical products which play such an important part in improving the rubber used in tires and countless other articles from elastic bands to hot water bottles. This work, contributing as it does to the daily comfort and convenience of all of us, provides one more illustration of the DuPont pledge, better things for better living through chemistry. Next week at this same time, our program will tell stories of American bands at home and abroad, Arthur Pryor and his band will again be heard when DuPont continues the first group in its summer musical series in the Cavalcade of America. This is the Columbia Broadcasting System.